morning everybody it's Jean here um the last time I uh, saw you or whenever it was I had my little uh, grandchildren here and we were making our applique circles that I'm going to be uh, cutting apart and putting into a um, a quilt I have uh, piles of 10 here uh, the quilt I'm going to be making is quite large I've made this quilt before I think it I think it ends up a, a fairly a oh, fairly decent sized quilt and I'm not frightened of that uh, because as I said I've made this before out of my batiks and it works up real pretty I, I cut my squares I believe I think it's a I don't know how big these are um, these are about five inches about five inches so I maybe I do like uh, 14 or 15 across a row and maybe 17 down something I need an awfully lot of them that's what I'm saying but I was showing you how I was doing it on my older machine with my specialty table, right? Well, um, this ha table has holes in it if you're just tuning in. And I can make perfect circles on this table with a uh, sort of like an old-fashioned compass protractor with, the, um, with a pivot point that you put in, you put in and then the, the uh, stitch goes around. Well, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do it on this machine because it has a lovely satin stitch. I'm going to show you how I do it without the table, just on a regular old sewing machine. But first, before I get to my little circle making tutorial thing, um, quite a few people have seen on the back of my chair here, this quilt. I made this quilt, oh, about 12 or 13 years ago. It's a, um, I think they call this sort of like it's a, a loose version of a Hawaiian applique. All right, again, I used batiks. Maybe I, 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 I got a bunch of batiks years ago. I don't gravitate towards them now, but I'm going to be using them up. So here is my Hawaiian applique. I won't, I won't pull it all out, but as you, you, get, you, get the, you get the idea of it. It has this lovely design here, a sashing, a small inner border and then an outer border of the batik. Well, people are saying, oh, how did you make that? How did you make that? Well, what I had done is I, I got a, this is years ago. This is a book, A Better Homes and Garden, Quilt Lover Favorites from American Patchwork and Quilting. This was a book that I got way back when. This is volume four. And this was printed in 2004 so it's an older book and actually on the um on the front cover you'll see it has these different appliques one of them is which is this one and um somebody had asked me specifically on my comments and i commented about the book you know oh how did you make the book and where what is the pattern and I, I did use a pattern. I did use a pattern way back when, and I, I, I searched it out because I have a, even in all of this mess, I have pretty much a photographic memory. I know where, I know, I went right to the book. Go figure, I have like a, hundreds of books. And I remember this because it was, it was amongst one of my favorites. It, it's sort of a classic, um, a classic book. A lot of, a lot of older books come with um, templates you have to cut out like a, a, a cardboard or like a, a plastic template to cut it out. Quilting is coming awfully lot with rotary cutting but a lot of quilters still use templates and this pattern this pattern I was looking and I thought oh look at that I was so organized I made the template I made the it's like a plex a, a quilting plastic template now, why I'm saying this about this quilt here, there you go. There's my template. And I used a small satin stitch on this template. Piece of bat, a piece of bati a, a, a cut out batiks, and then I, I put them on the background. Now, why I'm saying this about my, tu my, my circle tutorial, you might be thinking, what does that have to do with your circle tutorial? Well, it has everything. I'm just using a circle shape and I'm going to show you how I'm cutting out a circle shape or how I will eventually be cutting out a circle shape. I just cut out this shape. It can be whatever you want. Uh, for my block party, I might be doing a heart um, or this little bit of a complicated, but you could make this. People were saying, oh, how did you make that quilt? Well, other than buying or finding or sourcing this book, again, Better Homes and Gardens, 
Quilt Lover's Favorites, Volume 4, from Mark and Patchwork and Quilting. Other than buying this book, I don't know, probably not in the shops. Maybe you'd have to, maybe, maybe, whatever. Uh, uh, internet it, whatever. Uh, Google it, I should say. Um, to find this actual pattern. Do you remember when you used to make snowflake shapes in school? You cut, you, you did a paper like three, to, four times and half, and then you cut out a simple shape. Now, this isn't exactly simple, but it wasn't really hard because I, I, I was a new, I was a new beginner. Maybe I'd been sewing for about three or four years quilting, and I did a really nice job. I did a very fine satin stitch around these images. I just, and then when I went to quilt it, I just did a. I did. I had learned free motion quilting early on. I just free motion quilted around the image, and that was it. There's nothing in this. There's nothing here. And then I did a a, a, a stencil, which I do like. So anyway, that's that. You can you can make basically right now. I'm going to show you how I make a circle on a square. But people are saying, "Oh, how did you make that quilt?" And I'm like, "That's how I made it. I got a pattern. You don't really need to though. You can cut out a shape and." Did I, did I, I think I, even back then, I just did a little dab of glue and raw edge. I didn't, I don't finish it. I didn't finish it with an, like an, an interfacing or anything. I turned it on. I did, I didn't do needle turn. I don't do handwork, as you know. I just st stuck it on there and, or pinned it or glued it or something and then just satin stitched it. Anyway, that's that. I'm going to be showing you now. Here are my, I've cut them in quarters. Here are my, my, uh little blocks to make this quilt but right now I'm going to be showing you how I make a circle without using any handy dandy special tools or anything just my sewing machine and you can do it too all right I'm gonna put my, my camera down I have made a simple four patch as you had seen me doing and cutting and I'm going to be cutting this in half or in quarters now, you saw that I also had done a circle on just a, a, a square, 10 inch square. And my, my, when you sew together four charm squares, um, your, your block is going to end up nine and a half inches square, raw edge, um, which is fine. So if you can use a 10 inch, if you use a 10 inch square, you just have to cut it down a little bit. Um, now, I have a piece of, um, of, this is what I've chosen for my circle. Okay, I've chosen this red batik for my circle to be to go on here. Lots of contrast. I'm not thinking or overthinking the color scheme. Obviously, this is a scrap quilt. Um, you could do it with any scraps. I would think though, you would want to to keep it a little bit uh, a, a little bit controlled. Maybe the same the same look. Like if you're doing like a 30s print, all that. If you're doing batiks, all of that. If you're doing novelty fabrics, all of that. Um, or, or not. Whatever. Whatever. It's a scrap quilt. I like the fact that this is all batiks. As I said before, I have made this and I sold, I believe, two of them in my shop. Um, they, they really are quite pretty and effective. So here is my circle. Now, I had my machine, as you know, um, had done the same size circle um, when I when I had put it all together. It's very interesting um, because I want them to be all the same size circle. So here, just from what I've, what I've done and what I've cut out is, um, roughly that, that size circle. Okay. Well, it's very interesting. That's made on my table, but I had found, <laughs> I needed a circle, right? I needed a circle and I found in my sewing room, this old tin that I had. And this tin is pretty much the same size circle. It's so funny. Um, as, as that one. And if it's a hair off, it's fine. So what, I, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this, this I, I'll just make sure that this scrap of paper or this scrap of fabric here for my, uh, for my, my circle is, is the proper, is going to be the, the size. And this is, this is what? This is about an eight inch square, something like that, with a little bit of extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, fa this square here doesn't have to be exact it's, it doesn't have to be exactly square you just, just you what we're going to do is on your piece of fabric that your, is your circle you're just going to fold it in half and then half again and you're just going to scrape that corner point we just, we just we just want the center point 
The center point's going to go in there, but you'll see how I do this. Well, there's my center point. So now, pretty much, you can eyeball your, your circle, okay? You can eyeball that. And I can see that, I'm going to do it this way, I can see that that's pretty good. Now, with a pen, which, yeah, it shows up, with my pen, I'm just going to make a nice marking. Oh, I'm doing it on the actual tin. <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> Do it on the fabric, Jean. Yeah, make a nice marking. Hold this tightly. Excuse my arms if they're in the way. And there is my circle. Hopefully you can see that. Well, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see it up close. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to match up just for my own, for my own uh, thing. I'm going to match up the, the, the point there, and look, I just did it. I did it already. Just put that down there. Scratch it together. It's right in the center. It's right in the center. And then I'm just going to pin this. I'm just going to pin it around the edge. Just to hold that in place. And I'm going to take this over to my machine, and I'll show you what I do next. I've put my soon-to-be circle pinned, as you saw, centered exactly on my my background fabric here. My as and in this case, it's my charm squares. So it, you might think, oh well, how can I, you know, get this circle? What I'm going to do, just carefully and slowly, is I'm just going, this is nothing set up, it's just a straight stitch. I'm going to stitch on that line. I'm just going to stitch right on that line. I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to go slow. And I'm just going to follow. It, it, it doesn't, it's not hard. I'm going to go very slowly. And I'm just going to guide my fabric around on that line. I've made a perfect circle with my my can <laughs> and I'm not going fast because if you go fast you'll mess up but as you remember my computerized machine did this while I'm doing this I'm gonna take this I'm gonna cut that off I'll just cut that off and just continue I don't find have I don't find I have to glue or anything. Here I am, just coming here. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna meet where I started. And that's that. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna cut that. And to take my 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 circle is secured, right? And it's a pretty good circle. So now I'm going to do exactly what I did the other way. With my, my sharp scissors and with my fabric between, my scissors between the fabric, I'm just going to cut away. And like, like one of my granddaughters says, like, oh, don't cut the bottom piece because you'll mess up. So just very, very carefully. These are large scissors. You could use small scissors, scissors and go very slowly. Just you want to get very close, very close to that. Um, stitching. So just go slowly. You might have to go back and just trim it up a little bit because you want as close as you want, as, as close as you can to the stitching. Like I said, these are very large scissors. So there's just a little, there's just a little piece that I just sort of Go under there, and there's a little joggle there. And yeah, that's fine. Now, my machine over here, um, you can't see it, but I, it, it's computerized. I'm going to put it on to a wide satin stitch, just like I did my others. Now, this is, again, you just have to go slow. Just pick a place, put your needle down. And what I do is to cover that stitching and your marked line, which you can't even really see, I just sort of go just a, a tiny, you know, a, a thread or two inside to cover that stitching.
Now I do use a very wide satin stitch, and that really does sort of cover all you know all your sins. So now I'm just going to this machine has a lovely wide satin stitch. Try to keep my hands out of the way. There we go. And I'm just going to I have to keep my hands there. I'm just going to guide this very slowly, and it's just covering my my stitch. And it's going to the outside of the, the raw edge. And it's enclosing that beautifully. Now I'm not pushing or shoving or <clears throat> I'm just, or, or, you know, I'm just, as you can see, I'm just guiding it ever so slowly. I'm taking my time, let my satin stitch, you know, sort of sit into the material like it wants to. It's a nice close satin stitch. And look, there's no... I'm letting my feed dogs just take that fabric along with me guiding it. There's no gadgets or gizmos. You could do this on an older machine. And as I was saying in my previous video, on this quilt, I like the bright white thread because none of these batiks have any white in them. Now, by all means, um, your fabric choice is going to dictate your thread color. Like on this quilt, I could have I could have also used maybe black, and that would have even almost given like a stained glass effect because the white is very prominent. You can really see this white stitching. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to go too fast. I'm just guiding this along. Now, will this be as perfect, as perfect, as perfect as the other way? Probably not, but oh my word, it's good enough for me. I'm just looking, now when I'm looking, I'm just looking <clears throat> at this point here, I am looking at that needle where it's going, and it's just covering, as you can see, look, it's just covering that my marked line and my stitched line, and I'm just letting the feed dogs take the fabric, let your machine do the work, and you just quarter inch by quarter inch, just guide your fabric along that line. And it's enclosing all of that raw edge in my, into my stitch. I'm covering up the stitched line and the and the marked line. Now this is a pretty block just just like it is. <clears throat> you could just make a bunch of these and sew them together. What a lovely, 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 scrappy, but interesting quilt block. I'm choosing to cut them into quarters. This is called a drunkard's path, and um, it actually is curved. This is a, this is, if you're doing the traditional drunkard's path block, this is a curved seam. You cut this unit here, and then you cut like this pie shape, and then you put right sides together, and it's a curved seam. This is just the, <laughs> the ghetto version of a, of a drunkard's path, made very easily. I've made four, I've made four um, drunkard's path blocks with, uh, with doing zero curved stitching, which does require um, precise pinning. It's not a, a beginner, beginner block, but this is, I don't know, is it, is it real hard for you? Now I'm coming up to my home stretch here, and I'm going to just meet up. Just a little, 
and then I just go over it. I don't I don't back stitch it. Just go over it. It's enclosed. I hold that. And there, let me just I'm just gonna come around here. I just give it a hit with the um iron. My ironing board is right behind me. And the batiks iron up so beautifully. And there is my square in my circle in my square and I've not done anything fancy and I don't have any fancy machines uh, and there's the back <laughs> I always like looking at my backs um, now if you if you folks don't, I was thinking about it I never ever cut away my back in my back uh, applique but if you would want to get rid of this by all means what you do is you just pull this one forward and that one forward and then you just cut it cut this out this isn't a big lump on quite a few of my blocks i don't like this lump this is this isn't a lump to me there's not a, a whole bunch of stitches there a, a bunch of seams meeting so it's nice and flat but if you don't want this by all means take this out take that cut this out, and then just cut it away and then you have you have just your block like that i'm going to go starch that and it's going to go nice and flat and it's go i'm just going to cut it i'm going to cut it in t where like right here i'm just going to cut as i showed you in my other video i'm going to put my ruler from there to there and over to there and i'm just going to cut these into four pieces and there is my circle on my square so the um oh the video the um uh let me just show you here oh excuse me <laughs> i should be a bit more prepared sorry um the the, the, the book that i was just showing you for my the, the um, applique that I had done for my quilt the pattern or I just I just put it back excuse me the pattern here the pattern that I did um, what you would what you would do this is this obviously it's not big enough background but you would just satin stitch now you would have to you do you do have to move so you'd start you'd start your satin stitch perhaps in inside here and you satin stitch along there you, you come to this point and you, you Put it down wherever the needle and you pivot with the needle down and then you come in here so you, it's doable you come to this inner corner and then you turn your block around now this is doable because you're only working with a small block but as you can see so there's my size pattern i would make a, a larger maybe a 12 inch square for this size template here but the, you would just you know the whole thing you know is just a satin stitch a smaller satin stitch or a wider satin, whatever you would want to do and then you take your needle out and then you just do this final one in here um so that's that's that one that's how you do the satin that, that's how you do that one um but this is this is our circle in a um in on my squares so yeah there you go no fancy tables nothing and um yeah i'll continue my quilt and i'll i'll show you my progress later okay thanks folks bye